Hey, curl friends. How's it going? How's everybody doing? Oh my goodness, it's been so long <laughs> since you guys have been literally um, connected, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I don't know who's online right now. I'm going to go ahead and give everybody a chance to kind of join. Um, so yeah, of course, today we're going to be talking about how to embrace your natural hair journey. Um, it's honestly an entire it's a journey and if you've been doing the natural hair thing for a while you guys know that it totally is a journey so um i see that there's one person online right now i don't know who that is hi <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know who i am my name is lavinia latham i'm your curl friendly lawyer and here on fine natural hair rocks i teach other naturals how to you know not only grow their hair and enjoy more length retention and health and strength but also how to embrace their hair and how to really become their very best self so um whoever is online definitely let me know i'm gonna wait a bit before we jump on into these tips um so yeah but other than that i'm good how are you how's your day going let me know in the chat box um some updates on my end i've actually been super duper busy um just working with um uh one second girlfriends <laughs> there we go i don't think hubby wants to be on so we're gonna just switch our angle like this there we go <laughs> yeah so um what was I saying to you guys? This video is actually not going to be saved. I'm actually going to go ahead and um, delete this. So if you guys are here live, fantastic. Because <laughs> um, we're going to be hanging out tonight. So I'm going to pull up the video on, um, in, on my phone just to see who's on. Hey, Moments by Design. What's up, Silky Sacks? How have you guys been? How have you been? It's been pretty crazy on my end work-wise. Um, everything kind of just started to explode all at once. And it was super difficult to really be um, connected to find natural hair rocks the way I'm usually connected. So um, that's the reason why things have been kind of like all over the place. But um, Silky Sack says, hello, find natural hair rocks and chat. This hair color is beautiful on you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Moments by Design. Thank you, Silky. Thank you. Um, this is actually a protective wig. So I'm actually going to be rocking this for the spring because, you know, I'm trying to bring the spring back as fast as possible. <laughs> um, nobody's really trying to be holding on to the winter time over here. So usually when the weather gets like a little bit better, I kind of jump on in to wearing lighter colors. Are you guys like that too? Like, do you feel like you want to lighten up your, your hair, lighten up your wardrobe, just lighten everything up um, come spring? Because that's kind of like my vibe. I feel like the faster I do it, the faster the sunshine and the heat will come. I don't know, maybe it's in my head. Silky says, good, glad to see you. Sounds like you've been busy. Yes, been very, very busy. Been, you know, work has been madness. Like just personal life in the best of ways has been super crazy as well too. But um, we're back. <laughs> we're totally back. And we're back on schedule too. So um, one of the things that's actually going on right now, if you guys didn't get a chance to fill it out, there's actually a Find Natural Hair Rocks survey going on. And that survey is actually available in our secret Facebook group. So for those of you who don't know, there is a secret society, so to speak, for Find Natural Hair Rocks on Facebook. So the Facebook link is located, it should be in the comment box section below or the description box rather. Um, and if it's not, then I'll definitely pin it as a comment um, within the comment section. But yeah, it's actually a really great place to be because you can definitely post your own tips and tricks. You can follow my tips and tricks. All the brand new Fine Natural Hair Rocks videos are always uploaded there. And it's just a really nice place for the girlfriend crew to kind of connect, especially when things get crazy and, you know, the YouTube channel doesn't have is not as consistent, although I pray that that's not gonna happen again. But um, you know, if there is like not that many videos or not that many updates, for sure, the Facebook group is always gonna be updated like that. Hi, Patricia, how's it going, curl friend? Thank you guys so much for coming through. Silky says, wishing you much sunshine. Thank you, Silky. I hope so, I honestly hope so. <laughs> like myself and another um, YouTuber that you guys are probably familiar with, Kamira Jules, um, we're both in Toronto and we're just praying to God that this weather turns around real Real quick moments by design says i was wearing black tights sunday and was like what am i doing it's spring right let me tell you how old navy and old navies this is totally unrelated to the hair journey thing but old navy here in canada and in the u.s is having like a massive sale on jeans and so i went in and i went off <laughs> like 
I went in and I went off and I purchased a couple of jeans in lighter colors to really bring in the spring. Cause like, it's time, it's time. <laughs> It's totally time. So Kristen says you look beautiful. That color is gorgeous on you. Thank you, curl friends. You know what? Speaking of this color, um, there's actually a hair company called Gemini Naturals, and they've actually got some hair paint. So this is not my natural hair. This is actually a protective wig. I'm fully braided on up underneath because I just wanted to give the hair a break for a bit. But Gemini Naturals actually has these hair wax paints and they are stunning. Like I don't get anything for bigging them up. I don't get anything for advertising for them, but um, I'm really excited because at least from the pictures, it looks like it's on point. So that's the next kind of video ish or ideas that I'm like thinking of for my natural hair. Cause like, it's really cool to be able to use the paints to go ahead and do braid outs and twist outs. And you know, if you're a wash and go girl, then you can use those on wash and goes too. So it's really exciting. Cause like, you know, summertime is here, right? Kristen says, yes, I use Gemini Naturals all the time. They are the best in the game. Oh my goodness. I am so excited to hear that because I literally purchased them uh, about a week ago or maybe a week and a half ago and I'm still waiting for them to come. So if you guys are here, it's because you're interested in Fine Natural Hair Rock. So thank you so much. And you're also interested in the title. So today's title is, uh, or the live stream episode is How to Embrace Your Natural Hair Journey. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a bird's eye view into what my personal journey looked like, because I don't really talk about it too much, which I think I should, um, given the fact that Fine Natural Hair Rocks is all about, you know, embracing our natural hair and really seeing what about fine hair we can really love and hold on to and really start to embrace, especially in a world where natural hair is usually super thick, um, you know, the ones that are most like loved and, 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 you know, coveted, so to speak, are thick, curly, loopy type curls. And they're gorgeous, but there's space in the natural hair game for everybody. So Moments by Design says, I want to try hair paint this year. Girl, you totally should. It, it's Honestly, I'm trying it for the first time. And you guys let me know. If you want to know how that experience goes, I can definitely record it right here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks for you guys to join me in the journey because I've never colored, colored my hair before. I've never, ever done anything to my actual hair. So if you guys are interested in that, then definitely let me know. Um, Kristen says, I like them because they are gels and not wax. Yes, I like them for that reason too because you can just wash them on out. So if you guys are just joining for the first time, you have no idea what we're talking about. We're talking about Gemini Naturals and how gorgeous those colors are. Um, so Wind Dazzle says, hey, Fine Natural Hair Rocks. Hey, Curl Friends, I have missed you all. Oh, hey, Wind Dazzles. I've missed you guys too. Honestly, I'm so happy that we're here and we're together. I just feel like we have so much to talk about. I feel like so much time has passed. Even though it's been, what was it, like two or three weeks since we really got to like, you know, sit down together and have these types of conversations. So, I mean, I've got my water present in my little, you know, my Lexus Nexus cup uh, as a or, or thermos or whatever this is, as only a lawyer would. Um, I always have my water because it's, it's super important. So if you've got your tea, your water, your drink, um, this is going to be a fun one for sure. Hi, Jazzy. Hey, um, me, Patricia says me too. I never colored my hair. Um, yeah, like, you know, when we think about hair color and this goes to embracing your natural hair too. I mean, embracing your natural hair really is about finding those parts of your natural hair that you love the most and then really working hard or not working hard, but like leaning into the parts of it that you enjoy. So for me personally, I noticed that I really love doing braid outs on my curl patterns, right? Like I love how braid outs look. I love how the curls and using the right products, they tend to start to, you know, get defined and, and, and they really look really cute. And so I was actually, um, just to give you guys an idea, I was looking for a weave or a wig or something that would look like that and that would have color. But um, of course, there's nothing really on the market for fine naturals that looks like fine natural hair in the sense that like, the curls or even like the density, like usually when you're looking for a wig or you're looking for a weave, you're not necessarily gonna find something that looks like fine natural hair. Everything is meant to be high density. And so that's the reason why I'm super excited to go ahead and try hair paint because as you guys know, if you add anything to your fine hair, it will break, not might break, it will break, um, unfortunately. And so um, that's why it's really, really important to find those truly natural products that are going to do what you want it to do but they're also going to help you enjoy your hair. So um, 
PSR 076 says, I would be open to trying Gemini gels, but I would never color. Yeah, you know, the coloring thing, like it could definitely be damaging. So for sure, I can see the hesitation there. I personally would never use a real color. So Gemini Naturals, like the color gels is like literally the closest I would get to trying out on my curls, which is then going to also allow me to embrace my natural hair even more. Um, when Dazzle says, my love, it keeps freezing. Oh no, I, you guys, let me know. Other curl friends, if it's freezing for you, let me know. Um, there's actually not quite much I can do about the internet because like it kind of chops in and out seems to be really good when it's zoom time in the day with work but I don't know what's going on right now so um, yeah but no worries when um, wins dazzle we'll definitely keep you posted as much as you possibly can moments by design says my hair is in flat twist now hoping for a bomb twist out yes <laughs> I'm excited for your bomb twist out flat twists are the best the fantastic thing about the flat twists are that you can have your protective style going on and like moments by design you can definitely go ahead and unravel it and then have like she's gonna have a bomb ass twist out so <laughs> that's amazing hi mary what's going on welcome back welcome back welcome back to the whole curve front crew when Staddle says please record i'm nervous the color with will come off on clothes okay so i'm definitely gonna go ahead and record a tutorial on how i'm gonna be using those gemini natural colors for the first time you guys have the first dibs on it i purchased three colors. I purchased, uh, um, there was like a bronzy color and then there was like more of a golden color. And I think there was a red, if I remember this correctly. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and record, um, the first application of it for you guys to see the pros and cons, what works, what doesn't work, and then kind of take it from there. So PSR 076 says still rock rocking the wash and go. Never thought I was going to do that all winter. Oh, wow. Okay. So you figured out how to do a wash and go during the winter time. That's amazing. <laughs> I personally, I just, I can't, like, even though, like, you know, we're in lockdown and we're not going anywhere, here in Ontario, they're talking about how we're in the third wave. I didn't even know we were going to have a third wave, but we do. Um, so, yeah, even then, though, like, I haven't necessarily been rocking the wash and goes, you know what I mean? Uh, Moments by Design says, oh, my God, we've missed each other so much. So glad you did this live tonight. Oh, thank you. Yes, I've missed you, too. Honestly, I've really, really missed our girlfriend crew so very very much and i am being totally 100 authentic like it's just been absolutely crazy and i wanted to pop on then i thought that like maybe you guys are getting tired of the lives because like a part of me was like okay if i can't do a full upload maybe the girlfriend crew will want like just like a hangout session instead because posting actual videos is without an editor like i no longer have an editor because you know she got busy and there's certain things happening with the editor in her country um but for now it's just myself and it was just like madness so i mean you guys let me know if for the weeks that we can't do a regular upload you'd rather just hang and chit chat grab a snack grab your favorite beverage and just chill on by natural rocks then let me know and i'm happy to do that 100 <laughs> percent when dazzle says i remember the old spray on temperature colors yes in the little like they were like these tiny like cylinder type spray bottles i remember those my mom used to have a bunch of them for some reason i remember it being like blue yellow and pink and you would like spray on like spray paints let me know if that's right but um and she says they used to leave color residue on clothes if you're not careful yes i remember that too and i remember my mom would like spray it on her real hair spray it on like some of her like hair her her, her accessories like wigs weaves whatever like it was really really cool kirsten when dazzles i tried almost every color and it does not come off on your clothes pinky promise that is sweet kirsten you are literally hyping up my heart i can't wait to receive mine honestly psr 076 says it's fun that everybody came tonight it is you guys actually came through i wanted to let you know too you guys had said that you wanted this to be on the weekend I don't know, guys. Honestly, work-wise, things just flow from the week and into the weekend. And, you know, being, you know, the only lawyer who's doing this work at my place of uh, employment, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> if, if I don't do it, no one's doing it. So <laughs> it has to be done. But um, I'm so happy that we're here tonight. Honestly, I'm really, really, really happy that we've been able to connect. Um, 
Moments by Design says, yes, I did wash and goes all winter too. This is my first time trying something different since I'm working from home all week this week. That's fantastic. And that's the best time to really learn how to like embrace your curls, right? Like I feel like as much as the pandemic has been really limiting and like really stressful for a lot of people, you know, one of the silver linings that comes out of this is that you get the opportunity to try out different hairstyles, hang out in different outfits, see what makeup looks look the best with your natural hair. Like, you know, it doesn't all have to be just you know gloom and doom like I really feel like it, with this pandemic and like just being home all the time it's a really fantastic time to really just explore right um, which kind of leads to my first point so in terms of like what you want to do to embrace your natural hair journey number one start using different websites like Melon Interest. So if you guys are wondering what Melon, Melon Interest is let's go on the internet together right now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if it will allow me to do so. And we're going to, um, where is it? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Oh no, not this screen. Okay, so will it let me do that? No, it won't. Oh yes, it will. Okay, so if you go to a website called Melon Interest, Melon Interest is actually fantastic. And for those of you guys who don't know what Melon Interest is, and there's a whole bunch of like tips and tricks on how to embrace your curls um, that I was looking up to see how many of them I actually already do and how many of them could be new tips and tricks to share with the curl friend crew. So Melon Interest, you guys, and again, I'm not getting anything for this. <laughs> I literally just found this resource and I was like, you know what? I have to share this with the curl friend crew. I don't know what that was, if you guys heard that, but that was random. Anyways, um, yeah, so Melon Interest is basically a website that is just like Pinterest. And like, I find that it's really nice because you can just post, put in like a search term like natural hair and you can get a bunch of different, you know, pins and, and, and information that's related to natural hair. So there's a lot of fine natural hair rocks on this. <laughs> Because, I mean, why not? <laughs> but as you can see, like, there's different examples. So maybe you're in the teeny weeny afro stage. Maybe you're in more of a mature stage of your natural hair journey. Maybe you're considering color like myself and, and Kirsten has already tried. And so many of us are, are considering trying. You know, like, it's just really cool. Like, you can search whatever and you don't necessarily have to put, like, you know, on, I don't know if you're anything like me, but, like, when I search certain things on Pinterest and I'm looking for someone who looks like me to see what they're rocking or how they're doing it, I have to put like, say for example, um, pencil skirt outfit, black girl. Here you can just put pencil skirt outfit, pencil skirt outfit, and you can get like, you can see whatever is there related to pencil skirts and whoever's on there. So I don't know, I, I guess they don't have anything on that particular search term, but um, let's see, for example, curly hair outfit. I don't know if this is gonna come up. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the point that I'm trying to make is that the more you start making, um, you start exposing yourself to people. Who, oh, and there's financial hair rocks again. <laughs> Sorry, girlfriends. This was not meant to be a financial hair rocks episode, but or not episode, but advertisement. But for this one right here, um, as you can see, this lovely lady, she has her braids. So if you're looking up red braids, for example, or red knotless braids, you could totally look it up. And the idea here is to expose yourself to as many um, representations of curly hair and natural hair as possible to start really starting to embrace it more and more and more. So let's see um, what's going on in the chat. Uh, when Dazzle says braid outs, how do you get your twist out to look full? I want to wear twist outs and braid outs, but don't know how to make it look not too flat. So the trick with that, when Dazzle, is to go ahead into the actual roots of your style and just pick the roots, but don't pick too far out because if you pick too far out, it's gonna mess up the um, the definition of the style itself. So um, PSR 076, I heard of this, never had the time to check it out. It's fantastic. Honestly, I really do love Melon Interest for that because like, there's just so many examples. I mean, Pinterest has been around for eons longer than Melon Interest, but you could totally use the two of them, excuse me, and you'll be able to really start to curate looks that are matching your personal aesthetic. And I find that so important because the more you start to see that aesthetic, the more it's kind of normalized for your own eyes is the more you're going to feel more comfortable and start to embrace your natural hair journey a little bit more um, than you already are. When Dazzle says, did you see, say that that is a headband wave? wig. I am loving that look on you. Thank you so much. So this is actually um, 
It's a wig that I had for a very long time, you guys. Like, for whatever reason, it was just stuck in my stash. I wasn't really rocking it. Um, initially, I purchased the hair as bundles, and then I took it to the salon to get, um, and I know I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, belayage, I think it is. Um, so essentially, belayage is where they kind of give you a different color, um, and they slowly, like, transition it out. So for me, it was really important that the roots were going to be black because I knew that I would have to go ahead and mix it and blend it with my natural hair. So I want, and I know I never color my natural hair. So I knew that up here would have to be black and then I would get the rest of the color towards um, the bottom. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what is going on with this look. <laughs> um, Kristen says, was that question for me? Uh, not sure. Okay, so girlfriends are chatting with each other. So the second tip that I would say is to say really nice things about your hair. So the more I say nice things about my hair, the more I really lean in to what I enjoy about my hair is the more I feel better about it. And you know what? I understand completely and I 100% agree that all naturals go through some sort of an embracing type texture or process for themselves, right? But I would argue that if you're a fine natural, specifically if you're a fine natural with like really tight curls, uh, you know, 4C sisters out there, I'm speaking to you, 4B, 4A. I don't really like the typing, typing chart, but for the purposes of this conversation, I think it's important. So if you've got like a tighter curl texture, a tighter curl pattern rather, um, and you've also got like lower density strands, that's not necessarily what's mainstream. And so I find it really important to really just say nice things about your hair. Like it doesn't matter if the media is not celebrating it, we have to celebrate it for ourselves. And so I feel like the more we do that, the better. So an application in the beginning of my journey, I'll be totally honest with you guys, back in 2009, I did not like my hair. I actually legitimately hated it. I would never go outside with it. I would never rock it. Um, I was always covering it with something, either braids or wigs or weaves. Like I just, I had gone natural and then I had hidden my hair under like whatever I could hide it under with. And as I started to speak love into my hair, as I started to understand and love it for what it was and really say to myself, as cheesy as it sounds, I love my hair. I love the texture. I love the density. It's my hair. It's unique to me. There's nobody else on this planet who has this hair except for me. The more I said that to myself, girlfriends, friends, literally is the more slowly but surely I became more comfortable with it. It was actually pretty crazy because like I wouldn't even take pictures with my natural hair. Like it when I first started Find Natural Hair Rocks, girlfriends, friends, it was really meant to be an Instagram page for me. So it was private. I was posting up pictures on there, but I wasn't necessarily trying to share those pictures with anybody. It really wasn't meant for that purpose. It was really just meant for me to see myself on a forum that was meant to celebrate beauty and good looking pictures. And, you know, Instagram is very superficial. It's very, um, it's an aesthetic based app application, right? And so the more I would post my own picture on there, I felt better about my hair and like i felt more connected to this thing that's been connected to me my whole life but for whatever reason emotionally mentally well i know what reason it's you know socialization colonialization all that stuff but um you know all that aside i wasn't necessarily connecting with my own strands in the way that one should and so um when i i decided to open up the, the, the video or not the video but the page i decided to open it up and then people started liking it and i was like oh wow like people would leave comments like your hair is so beautiful or your hair is really nice or you know um curl envy or whatever like not that i'm you know celebrating curl envy culture but it really started to make me feel good because those pictures that I would post that I didn't necessarily like, that I was like, you know, I'm just kind of trying something here, um, people were actually resonating with. And then not only were people reson resonating with that, but they were also starting to share their pictures with me and sharing their insights on what works and what doesn't work with me. And then that's kind of how Fine Natural Hair Rocks started and grew. And, you know, at that point, I was like, you know what, that's when the Natural Hair Rocks movement started, like, really starting to take a foothold. And I was like, you know what? yeah like find natural hair rocks rocks too you know what i mean so um when dazzle says oh how nice this website is out there yes it's a fantastic website she says i rocked red brazilian yarn braids during the holidays i felt like a mermaid that sounds beautiful oh my goodness i would love to see pictures <laughs> Kristen, i agree i literally talk to my hair while i'm styling it saying nice things <laughs> 
honestly, it sounds crazy. It sounds silly. But at the end of the day, the only person who's hearing you is yourself and your family members. And if your family members are anything like mine, they already know you're crazy. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Kirsten W says, for a fine strands here. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Honestly, fine strands are gorgeous, whether you're type one or type the tightest of type fours. Like I just think there's a place for us all. And we really, truly need to come together and support. Uh, Moments by Design says, I don't do that with my hair, but I recently started doing that with speaking positively about myself and my body. And it's helping me slowly, slowly to see my beauty and compare myself less to others. That's fantastic. It really does make a difference. The first time I heard of like, it's positive affirmations. So the first time I heard of positive affirmations, I was like, hmm, this is a little like, you know, um, gone with the wind type of thing. And, you know, I started doing it and it works. It totally works. Like even in the pandemic, when it's so easy to fall into depression and to like, you know, really miss the way the world used to be and like, <laughs> you know, like missing the sunshine and stuff like that. Like it really does truly help. So I'm just gonna take a quick water break, girlfriends. Hi, David Mitchell. Thank you so much for joining. When's Daz when Dazzle says yes, Moments by Design doing the same thing. Yeah, like it's, you know, it really does help. My third tip is to accept what your natural hair can and cannot do. So accepting what your natural hair can and cannot do might mean as much as you're giving yourself positive affirmations, you're creating Pinterest websites with hairstyles that you can you know, realistically achieve with hair patterns and textures and densities that look like your own. Um, you will, you should also, in my view, if you're really taking this seriously, consider starting to, um, restrict at least until you start to feel a little bit better about what your natural hair can and cannot do. Start to restrict those other types of curls that kind of make you have curl envy, um, to use that term again, or make you feel badly about your own curls. So there's nothing wrong with only focusing on what makes you feel good as it relates to your own natural hair journey. Because because embracing your natural hair journey, just as much as you're trying to put positive things into your mind and into your 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 space about your natural hair, you want to also be removing anything that's negative. So for me. Um, in the early days, not so much anymore, but in the early days when I really wasn't doing well with my natural hair, when I wasn't feeling good about it, when I was having tons of curl envy, wanting my hair to look like, you know, things that it would never look like because that's just not the texture. Um, I actually started to unfollow some of those things, some of those pictures and some of those images that were kind of feeding into that negative space. Um, and you know, now to this now, like I'm perfectly fine with it. Like I rock my hair all the time and I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous to me. I, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable with my curls. Um, that's fine. Like I love all curls, you know, the loopiest and, and thickest of them to the thinnest of them. But in that moment, when, you know, you're in that space of vulnerability in that moment, when I was like, you know, really hating on myself, in that moment, it was very important to remove those images. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. It might sound kind of like, you know, what is wrong with her? Like you can't handle like <laughs> looking at other pictures, but it's not even about what you can or cannot handle. It really is about making sure that your mind and your, your, your esteem is in a healthy place to grow and to, you know, kind of start to combat and heal from some of those negative imageries and negative um, messages that we've received all our lives about our hair. Kristen says, confessions are the best because you're hearing yourself speak positive words from your own mouth about yourself. Exactly. And you know what? It's such a healing process and it doesn't necessarily have to apply only to your hair. It can apply to everything. Like if you're in a stage in your life where, you know, maybe you're at this point in your life where you want to achieve more or you want to perhaps go after that promotion or buy that house or you know maybe you want to start those savings or whatever the case may be you want to do something positive for yourself it really positive positive affirmations and removing negative messaging really goes super far when dazzle says just to get used to posting pics of myself but my page might be private for a while exactly and you know what that's 100 percent okay like there are tons of private uh, pages. And I think it's a healthy thing to do. I, I think word has it on the street that even Beyonce has like a private Snapchat or think um, she, she just, you know, she doesn't do it. <laughs> and it, I think it's healthy, like for whatever her reasons are, um, they're her reasons. And for you, your reasons are your reasons. And I think that 
excuse me, I think that having that space to just explore is really, truly essential when it comes to learning how to embrace your natural hair journey. The next tip that I wanted to say is, um, I guess we kind of spoke about that. So blocking out negative influences or in, yeah, influences on your hair journey. So we kind of spoke about that in terms of like, if you are somebody who covets curlier textures, looser textures, thicker textures, perhaps, you know, reducing your exposure to those images might really help. But to take that even a step further, curl friends, if there are people in your life who have negative things to say about your hair. So like, say for example, you, if you have 4C hair and there's somebody who's like, oh, that your hair is so nappy or it looks like carpet or whatever, you know, there's a whole bunch of ignorant things out there that I don't need to repeat. But, um, you know, there are a lot of, I, I say reduce contact with those individuals. Like, honestly, you totally have to be the gatekeeper for your own mental well-being, your own health and wellness. And it's not just hair. <laughs> it's not just hair. <laughs> like, it's not. Um, if it were just hair, we wouldn't have an entire industry that's a multi-billion dollar industry around natural hair. We just wouldn't, right? Because it's just hair. No, it's an expression of oneself. It's an extension of oneself. Um, it is ourselves. Like there is nothing that like, it's a characteristic of you. And so if people are in your life who are saying negative things about your hair, then those people, you know, kindly need to be reduced in terms of the contact that you have with them. Um, PSR 076 says, thanks for this testimony. You're so welcome, Patricia. Honestly, I am so happy to share this message because these are the tips and tricks that I used to mentally you know, remove some of the negative things that were going on in my head and that were really hindering my hair journey. So for the longest while, I was like, well, why isn't my hair getting longer? I see some naturals who they go natural today and seemingly like tomorrow <laughs> their hair is like down their back and I couldn't understand it. Um, but as I started to ignore other people's journeys and really focus on my own and see where I'm going wrong, like mentally and like even the things that I'm doing physically to my hair that were causing those setbacks and, and staying in the same place, it really did make that difference. R. Williams says, when I first went natural, I had someone say that my fro resembled a dirty Q-tip. Yeah, see, that's rude. Like I've heard, I've heard something like that before. I've also heard, you know, like natural hair looks like pubic hair, like just really ignorant things and removing those kinds of sources. Uh, like, first of all, they're very hurtful. So let's, let's not, let's not drive over that point. They are super hurtful. And, you know, there's, a special place for people like that who will have to answer to those types of things when you know their time comes but <laughs> um all that to say like i do truly believe that the less contact we have with people like that the better in in general for overall mental health and well-being and and embracing your journey because it's so important to embrace your journey i never want to be and i hope to inspire others to never become that person who you know lives in 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 different hair coverings for the rest of their life because they just hate their natural hair like i just i feel like it's such a horrible place to be and um you know we really do need to embrace ourselves for who we are the fifth tip that i have is to look for or create your own hair support system so you guys are all already doing that. That's right here on By Natural Hair Rocks and the Curlfriend Crew. <laughs> um, the Curlfriend Crew, honestly, as much as I hope it's been beneficial to you, it's been extremely beneficial to me as well in the sense of having a safe space to go through these, um, you know, these discussions, to really walk through these issues together and to come out on the other side on top. So um, for me, I really think that that made a huge difference in my natural hair journey back in 2009 and, and now in 2021. Um, it just really made a massive difference to have, you know, access to other people who were going through the same things that the same things that I'm going through. Um, Patricia, how so sorry, Williams, you got to hear that. That is mean. That's totally mean. And you know what? The sad thing about it is like stories like that are more common than they're not. So, um, I mean, I don't know. I think when people say things like that, it's almost like, they're projecting their own insecurities onto others, especially if you're in a place where you're starting to really embrace yourself and really come into your own. Some people feel intimidated by that. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but they do. And so um, I feel like when people say things like that, it's kind of like their way of um, fighting back. You know what I mean? Um, fighting back against their own insecurities. Um, and instead of fighting back in a positive way, they're fighting back in a negative way.
Kristen says those negative people can kick rocks. Yes, they can. 100%. <laughs> kick a rock with an open toe shoe. <laughs> Patricia, it's so important to have people who support you on the journey. I'm glad um, we're supporting. They didn't want us, me and my sister to get a relaxer, but got it anyways in my 20s. Yes. So I don't know how many of you guys are like Patricia. I was the same totally was the one who argued for my relaxer as a little advocate at the ripe old age of eight. I was like, I want to relax. I really, really want to relax. And I kind of just wore my mom down until I got my relaxer. Um, and yeah, like, you know, for the next, I would say like 13 years, I could continue to relax my hair and it was never healthy, relaxed hair. It was always broken. It wouldn't grow. It was stuck at like a whole bunch of jagged different um, lengths. It was just awful. And so, um, yeah, like a lot of people go through that. Right. Um, and, and when they go through that, it's, that's part of the, the process. So like now being on the other side of it, I'm happy to have had that experience because I know what it, I, I, I can tell myself. And I know for a fact that like relaxers don't work for me. It's funny because when I first went natural, the whole idea was to grow my hair out long and strong so that I could do what? Go straight back to relaxer, which is funny because I would never ever do that at all. Like never, I'm never touching relaxers again. But it's just really, really funny that back in the day that that was actually the intention. Moments by design. When I first started my natural hair journey, my family was so against it. But over time, they came to look forward to the different styles and looks I was doing. Now they love my hair. Yes. Isn't it crazy how so many of us have that story? Like, if it's not our family members who are in love with our hair, it's like coworkers or friends or like someone random on the street. Like, it's just really, really insane because so many people were so afraid of like, going natural and being rejected or facing mean comments. And that's not to say that we didn't face those comments because we totally faced those comments. I remember being in undergrad and being, you know, privy to conversations with guys who would be like, yeah, you know, I, I, my girl can't have nappier hair than me. And it's like, what? Like your hair looks exactly like that. It's funny because I was actually reading an audio book um, by Elaine Weltworth, if she ever sees this, Shout out to Elaine. <laughs> I love her. But um, her book is called, um, I think it's called A Woman's Worth. And basically, she's talking about the same thing where, you know, members of our own community, so Black people will hate on other Black people for rocking their hair. And it's just crazy how common that narrative is, right? R. Williams says, same, but my family only came on board once it got longer. So I feel like that's another kind of like a, a, um, a nuance to this, so to speak. And the nuance is that, um, you know, natural hair is only desirable. It's only beautiful when it's long. And that's not true. Like I've seen some fire cuts, like shout outs to my girl Mitsuko. Her hair is gorgeous. Like she has this gorgeous, like buzz cut on one side. Um, she's actually right here on YouTube as well. If you guys want to check her out, Mitsuko Blaze, um, B-L, Mitsuko spelled M-I-T-S- uh, M I T S U um, K O B. And then, you know what? Let me just put it in here. So, if you guys wanted to check her out, she's fantastic. She's got a beautiful buzz cut on one side, and she's just got her gorgeous natural hair at the top. And it's just amazing, like, how much we can really do with our strands um, if we're, you know, being creative enough to recognize it. So, Patricia says, don't forget to like the live. Yes. Thank you so much, Patricia, Patricia, talking about that. So go ahead. If you guys are enjoying this, give it a like. Also, um, we are so close to getting monetized, girlfriends. You don't even know it. Like, I can't believe how close we are to getting monetized. I think we need like something crazy, like 200 more hours. So if you guys want to help out and you want to see us get monetized, um, definitely go ahead and whatever your favorite Find Natural Hair Rocks episode is, if you could share it to me, I would be share it on your social media, I would be forever grateful because at this point we just need, I think 200 more watch hours and then we can go ahead and monetize. And once we monetize, that just means bigger and better content, which I am so excited to bring your way. So um, yeah, <laughs> uh, Kirsten says, Lavinia, I remember when you first shared your story about your hair journey as a child and it was very inspiring. Thank you, Kirsten. Honestly, um, being more vulnerable on the channel and sharing more about my journey with you guys is something that I've, I want to do more of in 2021. Um, I think the Crowfriend crew is really beginning to, you know, really bond and get 
connected to each other. And I hope that you guys feel comfortable um, sharing your stories with me as well too. Um, if not right here on the YouTube lives, definitely in the Facebook group. Um, and the Facebook group, I'm gonna go ahead and find the link for that right now. Um, because it's a really awesome place for us to just connect, especially if you've got, you know, a brand of your own. Like I'm always all for supporting and sharing information from other, um, you know, YouTube creators or other natural hair content creators, because there is space for everybody. Like, honestly, like I do not subscribe to this whole idea that like, you know, oh me, like there's only one, <laughs> there's only one YouTube channel. There's only one person doing this. Like, no, like everybody could be a part of the fun. And I, I just think that this space is all the more enjoyable when there are more people in it. So if you ever wanted to share something of yours, if you have a brand or you're, you're selling something, whatever, go ahead and, and share it on my, on our girlfriend crew, Facebook group. Um, Ah, thank you, love yourself. She says, yes, we'll definitely run your playlist. Thank you so much. So if you want to run playlists as well, there's about, there's a couple different playlists actually. And I will go ahead and share, um, let's take a walk and see if you guys are interested in some of the other things that are here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and share that screen again. So for those of you who don't know, this is actually the, um, the secret Facebook group. And yeah, there's the survey that I was talking about. So once you're, you fill out that survey, I will know exactly what kind of content you want to see because we are expanding Fine Natural Hair Rocks to include some other topics related to like self-improvement, um, you know, really getting your finances straight, that kind of a thing. Um, some of the things that have really made me, um, you know, quite successful to this point in my life, I want to share those tips and tricks with the rest of the girlfriend crew so that we can all thrive and strive and smash our goals together. So, you know, I recently did like a little, um, a collab with Jerry Johnson. Shout outs to Jerry, she is amazing. But yes, so this is the Crowfriend Crew Facebook group. If you guys wanna check it out, then definitely feel free to do so. So we are gonna go take a walk over to our YouTube page. That's uh, Fine Natural Hair Rocks YouTube page. And I'm just gonna give you guys a quick look at some of the playlists that are currently available. So if we go over to playlists, um, I hope it shows you the ones that are, yes, so it's going to show you the ones. So there's some private ones, but natural hair tutorials is available for everybody, I think. Um, no, it's not. Okay, <laughs> shorts. So there's shorts. There's a bunch of shorts. There's skincare. There's also um, best leave-in conditioners for fine natural hair. There's some stuff about the Revere. Vlogmas. There's 25 Vlogmas videos in there in case you missed it. Um, there's the Crowfriend Crew. I think this one's the best one, actually, the Crowfriend Crew Binge Watch Party. You can see every single video that was ever uploaded to Find Natural Hair Rocks. If you're more interested in something more specific, there's deep conditioner reviews. There's beautiful hairstyles that you can rock on your Find Natural Hair. Um, growth tips, product reviews, protective styles. There's a whole bunch of stuff, girlfriends, and it's all there ready and waiting for you guys whenever you're ready to come and check it out. So um, Alexis says, are you Canadian? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am from Toronto. I am born in Toronto, raised in Toronto, and I currently live in Toronto. Uh, Cyrus, hey, cuzzy. Thank you so much for coming on and supporting Fine Natural Hair Rocks tonight. Um, we recently did a poll, girlfriends, and I was asking you guys how often do you want to do, or do you even want to see lives anymore? And we literally were split 50-50 right down the middle. So... I'm gonna be the tiebreaker and say we will continue to do lives. Um, I think the lives are fun. It's a really great opportunity to connect. I think I love it and I feel like you guys love it too. For those who are not interested in it and they prefer the uploads, that's A-OK. -okay. The uploads are definitely still coming. And for those of you guys who like the live streams, hey, I'm over here too. <laughs> so yeah. But that's enough about me, girlfriends. How's it going on your end? What are you doing with your hair right now? Let me know in the comment section how you're rocking your hair and what style you're gonna be doing next because I would love to know. <laughs> I would absolutely love to know. For now, I'm gonna be rocking, like I was telling you guys earlier, this wig. Um, and then after this, I might try some box braids. Thinking of doing those box braids myself, probably in the brown color again, because like so many of you guys really liked it and the brown color is something that I actually used to do a lot of back in the day when I was younger. And for whatever reason, I just stopped. But moving on forward, I'm definitely going to be, at least for this summer, 
doing mostly brown and black looks like that honey blonde look um, just to kind of like lighten up the color schemes a little bit. Water is so good. Honestly, keep your water in a thermos. It It's amazing. Like it just stays cold, keeps cold things cold and hot things hot. Love it. <laughs> I feel like that should have been a commercial for like LexisNexis. If you guys are wondering what LexisNexis is, it's literally like a nerdy um, legal research platform, like a software to find like case law and stuff like that. And so whenever they have events and things, um, networking events, they start to give out like swag, so like swag bags and items for free and all that good stuff. So I think either I ended up with this or my husband, I can't remember who, but one of us ended up with this and yeah, here it is now. And it's fantastic. <laughs> R. Williams, I did a steam treatment today and put them in flat twists. I love wearing wraps. Yes, that sounds really, really nice. Like wraps are fantastic. Flat twists are fantastic. Um, shout outs to uh, Crown and Glory here in Toronto. They gave me such a gorgeous flat twist style. I shared it with you guys a couple of months back when I first, first got it. I might share the photo with you guys again if you want to see it for an idea for your own protective style, but it was just such a nice style and it was really, really easy to install. It was just really pretty. Like I, I loved it. Moments by Design, there are only a few videos now because I'm still getting used to the camera, editing, etc. But being part of the Fine Natural Hair Rocks community gave me confidence to create my own YouTube channel. Oh my gosh! Moments by Design? That's amazing! Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. So one of our crow friends has a brand new YouTube channel. Hey! <laughs> and yeah, we definitely need to go over there and check her out. Is it your Moments by Design YouTube? Like, is this the one that you're work you're you're speaking from right now? Um, Sonia, let me know. Cause if it is, then yeah, like we all need to go over there and support. <laughs> Definitely we need to support. Love yourself says I've been rocking my curly half wig. Ooh, that sounds very, very pretty. I love a good curly half wig. Like I was speaking to my best friend earlier today. And she was saying how like amazing AliExpress is for purchasing like half wigs, um, curly hair styles, whether synthetic, excuse me, or um, whether synthetic or um, what do you call it there, human hair. And like the prices are really, really fantastic. And also, honestly, like even something like I hate to give Amazon any more money than they already have from this pandemic, but Amazon has been amazing. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys have been on my Instagram page, but there were these two wigs and like, y'all, like the wigs were only $20 and they were so, 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 so nice. Like very, very um, natural and just easy to play with. Um, PSR 076 says, following my routine, wash every six to seven days, which might be boring. Clarify and one pro protein treatment once per month. That's not, you know what? That's fantastic. And Patricia, I'm sure your hair is actually flourishing right now because that's what it is. Just the same boring regimen over and over and over again. You'd be surprised. I'll give you those results. Like I've had a pretty boring regimen over and over and over again now. Um, pretty much do the exact same thing. Like I, I kind of just feel my hair and see what it wants, but for the most part, it tends to fall into the same kind of structure, which is like, moisturizing a uh, wash day one week protein treatment wash week one week and then a detox to reset and then i just repeat the same thing all over again so i mean you guys like i've really been using a lot of sultanicals products on my hair lately and if you guys are interested in seeing actually you know i think i did record it if you guys are interested in seeing what that looks like i think the last video or the last three videos outlines exactly what my sultanicals wash day looks like um their products are amazing. And I, since that video, I've seen so much growth. Like there really is something to say about doing an Ayurvedic, um, based hair regimen for your hair. So, um, moments by design. Yes, this is the one I'm eventually going to do food, but I'm starting with hair videos. That's fantastic. Okay. So moments by design is here. She's on YouTube and she does uh, right now, natural hair videos, but she will be doing food videos as well, too. So I am very excited for you. I am definitely going to be checking you out, girl, because, you know, you my home girl and all. <laughs> my girlfriend. So, yeah, you guys definitely go ahead and check her out. Let us support each other. And 
And Sonia, definitely go ahead and post up on the Instagram page if you've got videos and you want eyes on them. I mean, the Crowfriend crew on Facebook is much smaller than our Crowfriend crew here on YouTube, but um, it's still worth it to get some eyes on your channel and to really start to, you know, promote your stuff. <laughs> go ahead and promote, girl. Go ahead and promote. Um, Love Yourself says, I got mine from Amazon. Amazon's amazing. Like, I know people are hating on it and saying, like, you know, like, they really profited off the, the pandemic, which is true, it did. But at the same time, like, it's really, really, like, convenient. <laughs> like, I'm with you, Mary. I am totally with you. She says, mine's a 4BC curl for $14.99. That is amazing. $14.99 for a whole style. Like, this morning, I felt so good being able to just throw on a wig and jump on Zoom. And then, you know, you know how we like to change up our hair? Midway through the day, I was like, oh, I feel like doing a different style. So then I, I wanted to do this. And I was like, that actually looks kind of weird if like the same person um, from one video or sorry, from one Zoom in the morning is on the Zoom at night, if your hair is changing like that, <laughs> right? So I mean, I decided against it and went back to the original style. But um, yeah, isn't that incredible how we can just switch up like that? Like, I don't know, I find it really nice. Yes, congratulations. Honestly, Moments by Design, it's a huge step to make a YouTube channel. It's a huge step to be in this space, sharing your voice. And it's incredibly brave of you um, to start off and just, you know, put yourself out there. So very, very, very proud of you. Very, very proud. Um, she says, thanks. I'm still nervous to promote, but the more eyes, the more reviews, which means the quicker I can get better. Exactly. Um, there's a really fantastic YouTuber. His name is Roberto Blake. And he talks about um, increasing your YouTube presence, increasing your YouTube, just really overall, just increasing your brand. And he's fantastic. Like y'all, like I really, really, really enjoy his stuff. Like he's been able to give such great advice about, um, you know, starting a channel and doing really well with it. So, um, yeah, I would definitely encourage you as well as anyone else who's considering this to go ahead and check his stuff out. Cause he really is on point. So do you guys want to play would you rather? <laughs> Let me know if you guys want to play Would You Rather, and then we can definitely get some Would You Rather questions going, because I don't know. We haven't done that in a while, and I mean, why not, right? Um, the next video to come, so I'm trying to figure out while we decide what we're doing. Um, the next videos to come are going to be released on either Saturday or Sunday. The goal is for Saturday, but, you know, depending on what happens during the week from here on out, um, it might be Sunday instead. But there is definitely going to be a video coming out on the weekend for sure, because we are back on schedule. <laughs> Moments by Design says, you know, we do love yourself says yes. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are so much fun. Cyrus says, LOL. Okay, so girlfriend crew has spoken. Okay, would you rather have more time or more money? I think that's a really good question. And you know what? Like, it's funny because like, I feel like that's the ultimate question. Like you, if you have a lot of time, it's rare that you have a lot of money. And if you have a lot of money, it's rare that you have a lot of time. So it's like, I don't know. I, I like, I, I, that's a really hard one. Like I'd rather both, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'd rather both. Cyrus Joseph says more money. Love yourself says more time. I don't know. I'm actually squarely in the middle of this because more time would mean more time to like, you know, do the things I love, which is like hanging out with the girlfriend crew, posting videos, like chilling and enjoying life. Like this is the kind of stuff that I love, you know? But then if you have more money, then technically you could do things to buy time. I don't know. <laughs> um, Moments by design, man, that's tough, but more money and I'll pay people to do stuff which will give me more time. Yeah, like say for example, if you were able to like hire like a cook to cook super healthy meals, and then like hire a cleaner to clean because like, you know, as much as it's nice to clean, that's time consuming and having someone just do the cleaning for you all the time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with more money. <laughs> I'm gonna go with more money. Patricia, it is a hard question. It is such a hard question. It is a very, very hard question. I don't know. Huh. 
Huh. Love yourself? That's true. More money, more problems? One million percent. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. More money, more problems, 100%. Every single person I know who's come across like lots of money, immediately their problems skyrocket. Like they have so much problems, it's insane. Um, yeah, but then I guess you could use the money to like, you know, give away. Like I wonder what the problems would be like for someone who has like crazy amounts of money, like a Beyonce. Like I wonder what her problems are like. Cause like, I just feel like, that's insane. <laughs> Moments by design is laughing. She is right, right? Mary hit it on the nail. Okay. Would you rather be a kid your whole life or be an adult your whole life? So would you rather, and I'm going to go ahead and type this into the chat box. Would you rather be a kid your whole life or be an adult your whole life? This is a hard one. This is a really hard one. I love how I'm choosing, excuse me. I love how I'm choosing all the hard ones tonight. This is a really hard one. Would you rather be a kid your whole life or be an adult your whole life? See, when you're a kid, you don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to worry about anything. Everything is like your whole life, your whole existence is like play, 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 play some more, and then play, play, play again. Like, it's amazing. Uh, but when you're an adult, like you have to, like you have real responsibilities, right? Like you can't just play all the time. Like if you play all the time, you'll find yourself homeless. If you play all the time, like, you know, things that need to be done won't get done. Like, I don't know. Cyrus Joseph says, a kid, I miss the nineties. The nineties were so we, like the nineties were so on point. Like I remember when as a kid, you know, you'd still go out in your backyard and find something to do with yourself like kick a ball or, you know, maybe catch a caterpillar or I don't know, like, you know, pick dandelions. Like that's what I used to do. Kids nowadays, like they barely get out. Like, I feel like when I have my own kids, I'm going to have to force them off of like whatever technology is available and be like, just go outside. Like there's no technology for you today. Just go outside. <laughs> like it's crazy. Love yourself says be an adult. Jazzy says be an adult. Patricia says be an adult and love yourself says most adults act like kids. <laughs> that is so true. The truth of that is amazing. Do not kill me. You know what? As much as it was pretty sweet being a kid, I would definitely choose being an adult because at least you get to, you know, um, fashion and design your own life. You design your own reality. And it's kind of like in your hands, what happens, right? Like if I feel like eating pizza all day and all night, I can eat pizza all day and all night. Mind you, my body will suffer, but you know, you can do it. Like no one's really dictating to you what you can or cannot do. Um, okay. So the next question is, would you rather get rich through hard work or through winning the lottery? The lottery? Would you rather get rich through hard work or through winning the lottery moments by design says adult with the innocence energy and flexibility of a child i love it notice how moments by design always gives these like truly sophisticated intricate answers that are so well thought out like i love it i love it you hit it on the nail like who wouldn't want to be an adult with the innocence the energy and flexibility of a child that's fantastic um, Cyrus says, I miss Dickie D and blackouts, LOL. I don't remember blackouts. What was blackouts? Give me, give me some, give me some juice on that one. Cause I, I really don't remember that. The nineties were lit. Then it went downhill. It definitely did. It 100% went downhill. Um, let me put the next, what was, did I tell you guys the next question already? I think I did. Um, would you rather get rich through hard work or through winning the lottery. There we go. Would you rather get rich through hard work or through winning the lottery? I'm going to go ahead and say I'd rather get rich through hard work because when you win the lottery, like the chances of you holding on to your wealth after you get rich through hard work are much greater than the chances of holding on to that wealth by getting rich through winning the lottery. So I would definitely say um, that I think the better, the best bet would be to win 
sorry, to to do the hard work and to kind of like, you know, climb the ladder and yeah, do the work. Like I feel like the likelihood of making the, those good decisions and those learning lessons that you would gather just by working hard all the time are going to be the same learning lessons that are going to help to like maintain the wealth and grow even more. So yeah, I think there's no shortcut. Even if like the lottery kind of looks like a shortcut, I mean, I would still like to win the lottery. Like, let's be real. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I think there's something to be said about just, you know, regular old hard work. Moments by Design says, I need that lottery ticket now. So I don't know. I want to say hard work because I'd appreciate it more, but I've got bills now. So exactly. Honestly, the lottery ticket, I would love the lottery ticket. I would never say no to the lottery ticket. So let's just put that out there that I would never say no to that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I'm with Love Yourself and Patricia. Like, I, I, I think that like, I'm, I'm really down for um, those lessons. Cause like, I would never want to win the lottery. And then because I don't know how to handle that money, you know, end up losing it. Right. Like that would be awful. Um, okay. Let's see. What are we going to choose for the next one? Would you rather have nosy neighbors or noisy neighbors? Let's go ahead and put this in the box. Would you rather have nosy neighbors or noisy neighbors? I don't like noise. <laughs> like, I really like, because the thing is, is like the kind of work that I do, I truly do need silence in those moments. I truly do need to be able to just focus. Um, so between nosy and noisy, I would pick nosy because like that could be managed, right? Like if they're always asking questions that they really have no business asking, if they're always, you know, doing things that they really have no business doing, like that's kind of manageable, right? Like how are people going to like peer into your apartment or your house or wherever your dwelling is if you've got like, you know, some nice curtains? How are people going to gain access to your information if, um, you know, you don't tell them? <laughs> I don't know. Love Yourself says noisy. Wins Dazzle says noisy. Moments by Design says nosy. I don't want all that noise when I'm trying to rest and relax. Yeah, it's interesting. We are like actually split down the middle here. Wow. I thought more of us would have been like, oh, I prefer, um, I thought, I don't know. I just thought that we would all like fall on the same spectrum here. Like, that's really interesting. Like, I, I figured most people wouldn't care about the no nosiness and would be like, oh, I just don't want it to be noisy. Patricia says noisy because you can find a way to blot the noise. Oh, so you prefer, okay. So most of us are saying we prefer someone who's noisy over, um, sorry, we prefer somebody who's nosy over noisy if that makes sense. So like the noisy, nosy in the sense of like being too much into your business and noisy in the sense of like just being too loud. Like I would prefer the one who's like really into my business because I would just block out the information. That's all. But then again, I guess that makes sense. Like if you have a YouTube, if you're somebody who has a YouTube channel and you're sharing information about yourself and you're like, I'm a pretty open person anyways. Um, but people who are nosy, like they just want so much information. That's that's that can be difficult for sure too. Definitely could be difficult. Um, okay. Would you rather be in your pajamas or a suit all day? <laughs> this is a COVID question if there was never one. Would oops, there we go. Would you rather be in your pajamas all day or a suit all day? I prefer the PJs. Not gonna lie, being in a suit all day is very, very uncomfortable, and I would never want to do that. So, like, definitely would prefer to be in the PJs all day. But let me give you guys a little story while you guys weigh in. During this pandemic, I got really excited because, like, I work from home, right? So I was like, okay, I work from home. I don't necessarily need to get dressed up, even though I love getting dressed up. I don't necessarily need to match. Like, I just don't need to do anything because I'm just on Zoom. And like, you know, the days when I'm not dressed up, I can just, you know, be off camera. And the days when I am dressed up, then I go on camera. Well, 
who would have thought that wearing PJs all day, not really doing my hair, except for coming on YouTube and hanging out with the girlfriend crew, would really start to have like a mental impact. So um, I just did a little experiment uh, about a month ago and I was like, let me see what it would be like to get dressed the way I would get dressed normally every day had it not been for the pandemic. And honestly, just like that, the pandemic started to bother me less and less and less. Like it's still like, I would rather, you know, everything be normal, but it's more manageable in the sense of like, you know, feeling a little bit more like normal by dressing up and looking good and all those things um, on the regular. So yeah, just a really cool story while we weigh in. Um, but in the beginning, definitely, I'd rather be in, I still would rather be in PJs all day than a suit because suits are very uncomfortable. So yeah. <laughs> Love yourself says PJs. Moments by design says that's a hard one. Neither honestly sweats. Yes, PJs not as much. Yeah, like, being in sleeping clothes all day like it just sucks energy and it's so weird i don't know why like i feel like pjs it should be comfortable and it should be like you know enjoyable and maybe like because you're comfortable you're more productive but for me it just i don't know it just sucks energy <laughs> yeah, patricia says pjs windazzle says pjs yes but for this one between these two i would prefer the pjs for sure uh, okay, let's get another one. Oh, this is an interesting one. Okay, would you rather be gossiped about or never talked about at all? That's a very interesting one. Would you rather be gossiped about or never talked about at all? Moments by design. Yes, I found that when I got dressed every day, I felt better than when I never changed out of my PJs. So if the question was loungewear, I'm all over it. Absolutely. Yeah, the way I kind of interpreted that was like PJs, loungewear, sweats. Because like, you know, if you're anything like me, like if you have something that's comfy and you wouldn't necessarily wear it outside, um, for me, that's a PJ too. <laughs> like sweats. And a little a old graphic tee from back in the college days and an old sweater. That's PJs for me. That's hanging out on the couch for me. Like, whatever's comfy works, right? Um, so, yeah, like, I, I, I would definitely figure that, consider that. Cyrus says, I'd rather be gossiped about. <laughs> I love your honesty. Cyrus, you have to give us a little bit more, more information about that one. You are so quick on that. Me, I'm actually stuck because, like, on one end, I don't want to be gossiped, gossiped about. Who wants to be gossiped about? But then on the other end, I don't necessarily want to never be talked about at all either. Like, that's not a good thing either, right? So I don't know. I don't know. Patricia, you guys wait in. Give me your thoughts. Lay it out. Patricia says never talk not talked about at all. Okay, when Dazzle says, we have had this question before, I think gossip about is my new answer from the last time. We did have this question and I think I was stumped back then too. Um, yeah, and I'm still stumped. <laughs> I'm still stumped. Love yourself, never talked about. Moments by design. Um, oh, she said that too. I feel like we've had this question before, LOL, but I'd say gossiped about, never talked about, says I'm not making an impact. 100%. You guys are sharp. Look at you guys calling out the repeat questions. <laughs> totally, totally, totally remember that question before too. Um, but yeah, I'm stumped. I'm going to say I'd rather be gossiped about because like if you're being gossiped about that means you're making an impact because like not everyone's gonna love you right like you could be the most amazing person in the world not everybody's gonna love you so and that's unfortunate and you know if that means that you're gonna be gossiped about that's a lot better than not being talked about period cyrus says it would make me feel good because i'm interested to be in your mind right rent free living rent free in somebody's mind that's what they call it okay this one we've never ever had would you rather own your own boat or own your own plane? I am going to go ahead and post this here. Would you rather own your own boat or own your own plane? Which one? Which one? <laughs> hmm. 
I have mine. I definitely have mine. I, you guys, and you guys know this from the last ones that we used to do. I don't like flying. So for me, <laughs> I'd rather own my own boat. Like I am not a fan of flying. I do not like it. It's just, it's not for me. Oh, Cross of a CPA. What's up, Sable? Thank you for coming through to this super random um, live stream. Like we only really planned it yesterday. We were supposed to be live yesterday, but then um, life happened. And so we're live today instead. So thank you for coming. She says, I'm detangling my hair. So I'm just here for the good vibes. LOL. I can't play and detangle. <laughs> I hear you, Sable. I hear you. Yes. I. We appreciate you and we love you, Girlfriend Crew. So happy to have you here. So whatever you can do, we are happy to have you in the mix. R. Williams, plane because I can't swim. 100%. Cyrus, I ball and scream on planes and I sing Titanic and I can't swim. Cyrus, you have to choose one. <laughs> There's no pleading the fifth, although I pled the fifth. Did I? No, I didn't. So yeah, you gotta choose one. You gotta choose one. Uh, Curls of a CPA says, plane for me. Ooh, someone likes to fly. Girl, you gotta give me some of those tips on, on that flying thing. Like we spoke about it in the Curlfriend Crew a couple months ago. And yeah, there's a couple of us who just don't like it. Third Eye Angel, hey girly, what is up? Thank you so much for coming through. You guys are so sweet, thank you. I appreciate seeing you here. We are actually just playing Would You Rather. So we had a really nice chat about how to embrace your natural hair journey. And now we are playing Would You Rather because that this is what we do on Find Natural Hair Rocks on our live streams. Ah, wind as a boat, more room to host events. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's true. Have you guys ever been on a boat where they had like a nice restaurant? Or if you've ever been to one of those boat parties, I know they have a ton of them in New York. Um, they also have a ton of them in Toronto too when it's summertime, but I love those. I, I don't club anymore, like clubbing's a no, but I will go on a nice boat party, like a nice boat cruise party. Oh, I miss them so much. Pandemic, go away. Go away. <laughs> I miss them so much. Moments by Design says, I think I'd rather own a plane. Interesting. Moments by Design, I thought you didn't like planes at some point. For some reason, I remember you saying that you didn't like them. I don't know why. Patricia says neither. Really? Patricia, girl, you got to let us know. Why don't you like any of them? Wind Dazzle, hey, Curls of a CPA, glad you could join us. Isn't she lovely? I love Sable. I love Sable. I love Third Eye Angel. Like, Girlfriend Crew, you guys came out hard tonight, man. Thank you. Cyrus says neither. <laughs> Not even a boat? Okay, Girlfriend Crew, let's talk. Let's talk about the fear in our group right now. I just feel like, okay, as much as I hate flying, I still do it because it's important you gotta travel, right? Like who doesn't like to travel? I like to be in new places. Um, with the plane, situ with the boat situation, for whatever reason, I'm just not as afraid of it. Like, I feel like, you know, you just put on your little floater piece and you know, you're good to go. Like you just float until somebody comes to save you, right? <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's just so much more easier to survive. Like when we went on our cruise, um, there was this one night, I swear the big, big ship was like literally feeling like it was going to topple over like you would walk down the hall which usually looks like this that night the hall was like this like it was just absolutely insane and like i never prayed so hard in my life i went straight to my bed because i was like if i die tonight at least i'm dying in my sleep it was just awful but at the same time for some reason i wasn't as scared on that boat rocking and going through that storm that caribbean storm than i was being in a plane like I don't know, I just prefer the plane, <laughs> the, the boat rather. Definitely deserve the boat. Happy to have you here, girl. And I hope your detangling's going well, Sable. I really do. <laughs> um, girlfriend crew is chatting with each other. Uh, Moments by Design says at first I didn't, but grew to love planes. That's interesting. They do say the more you do it, the better. So, I mean, there is something to be said in that for sure. Uh, third eye angel, I could see owning a nice boat. Flying makes me panicky. 100%. Flying, flying is stressful. And you know, the whole situation right now with like, um, COVID and everything, it doesn't make it any better either, right? Like, it just doesn't. Oh, this is a good one for you guys. So you guys are such an intelligent bunch. Um, and you guys have good memory too, because y'all are calling me out on the repeats. <laughs> but this one, this one I know we've never, ever done. 
would you rather mentally or physically never age? So putting it in the curl chat just in case so people can see it. Would you rather mentally or physically never age? So either you're going to stay the exact same. <laughs> You're going to stay the exact same mentally forever, or you're going to stay the exact same physically forever. So you might be stuck at like a 10 year old body or stuck at like a 10 year old mindset. Like which one do you prefer? Um, and this is a very deep question. I find like, this is a, this is a deep one. Um, ah, you guys are the best curls of a CP, but if I own a plane, I don't need to meet the COVID people. That's true. That's true. If you own your own plane, you can do your own thing. You have your own pilot. You have your own um, hostess. You have your own everything. People, everybody's, you know, dealing with your every whim. Like, that's fantastic. I mean, I don't know. You guys are making it. I, I, I still would prefer my boat. I feel like wherever there's a body of water, I could just take my time and find my way to wherever my destination is. <laughs> but um, yes, this is the question. Would you rather mentally or physically never age? Cyrus says, why I don't like planes is when I was eight, we were flying to Trinidad and we flew into an air pocket. The plane started dropping and shaking and the oxygen mass dropped from the ceiling. Oh my gosh. Cyrus, I didn't know that happened to you. So for you, for curl friends who don't know why, like I just had no clue that happened to my cousin. So that's, that's actually really, really crazy. Like what? That would freak me out too at the ripe old age of eight. That's horrible. Or Williams depends on at what age I'm at. So I would say you can choose whatever age that you want to be stuck at. And if that's the case, then I would want to be stuck at like age 21. No, 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 no. I was really broke then. Um, what age would I want to be stuck at? I don't know. But you know what? You wouldn't be stuck at being broke because you're stuck at that age and you're just stuck at that age. So like you're just like improving upon your life, but you're stuck at that age. I think physically I'd want to be stuck at 21 because like that was when I was my fittest. That was when I was really on like my A game when it came to going to the gym and eating all my salads and like avoiding chocolate. Like I was just A game, A game. Like it was crazy. Like I was like a size four. Like it was insane, insane. And then I got comfortable and then, you know, one thing after the other, after another, after another. And like, you know, here we are, but it's all good. <laughs> Uh, Cyrus says, I want both. When Dazzle says, physically never age, I want my mind to mature so my mindset gets more positive. Yes, that's huge. I mean, that's massive because, like, if you're reading books, you're engaging in, like, you know, self improvement activities, and your mind is not aging, like, your mind is not <laughs> taking it in, you're not absorbing things, like, that's a problem. So, yeah, I think I choose physically as well. Like, I'd physically like to stay the same. Moments by design. Physically, I need to mature and grow mentally, but I need that flexibility and good knees. <laughs> yes. Yes to the good knees. We need good knees. Good knees are important. <laughs> PSR 076. Physically never age. If I can choose my age and keep aging gracefully. Yes. Aging gracefully is what we want. And, you know, that kind of goes back to the whole point that we, we weren't talking about today but we were actually talking about in my last video. So for those of you guys who don't know, I actually did a collab with Jerry Johnson. She took over my channel on yesterday's video and I took over her channel on yesterday's video. So if you guys are looking for a new Find Natural Hair Rocks upload, it's actually on Jerry Johnson's channel and her new upload is on my channel. So um, yeah, it, it, was, it was fun. It's a good one. I definitely suggest you guys check that out. But the reason I remembered that is because um, we were talking about like drinking you know, water and eating really healthy foods and that kind of a thing. And so, yeah, those things, of course, would help with aging gracefully. Third Eye Angel says, physically, I can't see being childish my whole life. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like, you know, if you're stuck mentally at an age and, you know, you're growing physically, that would like, I feel like people would start to like slowly trickle out of your life because it's like, your group would be maturing and like I you would be stuck if you're like just never ever changing you know mentally <laughs> so yeah no I, I I'm with you guys on I think we're all on physical when dazzle I don't like plane turbulence when turbulence happens I pretend to look brave and be nervous as <laughs> oh my gosh honestly like 
kudos to you for trying to look calm and brave because me i look like a hot mess like i'm putting it out there right now if you're a nervous flyer i am not the one to sit beside because i am the most nervous flyer ever i mean it's getting it was getting better so i had a job where i had to fly like at least once or twice a week or no once or twice a month not a week and you know believe it or not i started getting comfortable with it and then there was like this big stretch of time and i got really afraid of it and then i flew again um, the last time I flew was to New Orleans for Essence Fest. And then, yeah, like ever since then, that was the last time I flew because then COVID hit, right? So um, I don't know what the next flight is going to be like. Hopefully it's post-COVID because, y'all, I can't deal. Like, <laughs> I can't deal. Moments by Design, I saw her upload on your channel. Now I have to go to her channel to see your upload. Yes, we definitely took took over each other's channels and you're going to love it. You're honestly going to love it. I may actually... Um, do some, add a little bit more to that video and post it directly to find Natural Hair Rocks because I know some girlfriends out there might have missed it and might not know how to find it. Um, and there are some really fantastic tips in there as well as my new updated regimen. So if that's something you're interested in, then um, definitely it may just show up back on Find Natural Hair Rocks as well. Okay, here's another one that we've never done, guys. Um, would you rather be locked in an amusement park or a library? Locked in an amusement park or in library? Would you rather be locked in an amusement park or a library? You guys, I'm a nerd. I'd rather be locked in the library, to be honest. Like, because if I'm locked in the, oops, where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. If I'm locked in the amusement park and there's no one running the, like the the amusement the rides and stuff like that like what's gonna happen to me like i'm just gonna be stuck walking in the dark that's creepy like i wouldn't want that so i'll take the library 100 percent moments by design i had a job where i could be on different coasts within the same week or multiple different states within the same week so i got used to flying yeah that's definitely the easiest way to get used to it and like whenever i read up on like overcoming flight anxiety um becoming more comfortable being in the air those kinds of things all of them every single last one of them says just keep flying like just keep flying keep going places and keep flying and the more you do it is the more comfortable you'll be with it which i think is true because like it's just i had the same experience as you sonia like as soon as i started traveling more and being in the air more it wasn't a big deal and then when i stayed grounded for a really long time the fears came back so um yeah Sonia says, I'd rather be locked in a library, hands down, 100%. <laughs> Patricia, locked in a library, love to read. Yes, me too. Oh my gosh, I love to read. Speaking of authors, totally off topic. So I decided for the first time in my life to tune into The Bachelor, right? And um, I don't really watch those type of shows because like, I just don't have the time for it, right? But um, this time around, I was particularly interested in it because there was a Black Bachelor. And so I was like, if this is gonna go the way my anti-black racism mind thinks it's gonna go, um, and when I say anti-black racism mind, like I practice anti-black racism law, um, specifically like human rights law, that kind of area here in, in Canada. And so I was like, if this goes the way I think it's gonna go, it's gonna be a hot mess. And it was, it totally was. Like, how is it? Anyways, <laughs> you know what? That's gonna turn into a commentary. You guys let me know before I continue with my thoughts on that, if you even care to hear it. Um, how many of you guys watched The Bachelor? And is this even, one second, my laptop, of course, is dying on us. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys know about that. But the reason why I brought that up is because the author of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man was actually hosting. And he had some really interesting things to say um, to the contestant. Um, who won. So her name is Rachel Kirkconnell. He had some really interesting things to say about um, her and he really broke down the race card in a really amazing way. And so, um, yeah, let's see. When Dazzle says, oh, sorry, the 
The third eye angel says being locked in a library used to be my childhood dream. Oh, I love to read. Yes, I know you love to read because you know what? You guys go check out third eye angel. She's got an amazing YouTube channel, fantastic Instagram. And she's always sharing like her love of like natural hair. And she's got a really amazing candle collection um, as well as like books galore and really fantastic titles too. So you guys check out our girlfriend. She's so on point. Lynn Dazzle says, library just in case it rains. Cyrus says, no, say it, Lavinia, share. <laughs> uh, Moments by Design says, I don't watch The Bachelor, but I'm up for hearing your thoughts. Okay, let me give you guys a quick rundown. So essentially what happened was there's a black bachelor. He's half black. His mom is white. His dad is black. Um, the, you know, familiar trope is definitely there, whereby, you know, dad wasn't necessarily in his life and mom raised him as well as the brother, Right. So anywho, they go through this, like him, The Bachelor, his name is Matt James. He goes through this entire process. So essentially the show is about, you know, there's one bachelor and then there's like 25 to 30 uh, bachelorettes and they're all vying for this one man's attention. Okay. Really, really like, it's not the type of show that I personally normally watch, but I really did get into it um, once I gave it a fair shot. And I do encourage people to give things a fair shot. Like don't just, you know, write it off. Like just give it a fair shot. So I gave it a fair shot. Um, because it did have that lens to it. So anyways, um, they had all the contestants this time around. Usually the contestants are white and usually the bachelor and the bachelorette is white too. This time around, um, they made the contestants more uh, diverse. So there was like a lot of black girls. Um, you know, there was there was um, Asian girls like it was just mixed. It was a really nice blend. There were some mixed people like it was fantastic. Right. Um, so it comes down to the top two. One girl, she's mixed, she's half black, half white, and then the other girl is white. So the mixed girl doesn't win, but the, the half black girl, or sorry, the white girl wins, and her name is Rachel Kirkconnell. So in the three weeks coming up to, um, you know, the grand finale where he chooses his wife, it was becoming more and more obvious that the white girl, Rachel Kirkconnell, was going to win. And as it was becoming more obvious that she was going to win, a lot of information started surfacing that she was actually taking part in something called an Aunt Bellum party, which is essentially like a, a old South party where they celebrated like when there used to be slaves and like, you know, the white women used to wear the big dresses and like just a really um, cringe worthy type of party. Like if you as the white woman was like, you know, wearing these gorgeous dresses, deep down South type attire, then what was I doing back then right? as a black person? Like, what was I doing? I was obviously the slave, right? So you guys, I, I hope you can understand why that's problematic. Anywho, so this kind of surfaces and then people start from her past, that surfaced from 2018. So we are now in 2021. The show was shot in 2020. So people are out, you know, clearly outraged. He, the bachelor being half black, is outraged as well. Um, and then rumors start circulating that she's the winner and that he broke up with her and all this stuff, right? So he breaks the half black girl's heart. Um, her name is Michelle. So he breaks Michelle's heart, says he doesn't want to be with her. She, you know, cries and, you know, she wasn't even afforded an opportunity to talk to him after he broke up with her. Like, it was just kind of like a one and done. I don't want to be with you. That's it, right? So they do this whole shindig, it's very extra. And then the finale comes with an analysis. And the analysis of the show was crazy. Like it was just an amazing analysis um, because essentially what happened when all that drama was going on, Chris Harrison, the host of The Bachelor, kind of went on record to support what Rachel Kirkconnell said. So he was kind of like, you know, everybody makes mistakes. We shouldn't have cancel culture, which to a certain degree, I do agree with not having cancel culture. Like I think people can, you know, they can change, right? People can recognize their issues. People can recognize where they went wrong and people should be afforded an opportunity to change, um, especially if they're willing to make that change. But the way he said it irked and grinded a lot of um people, right? And so for that reason, he was canceled too. So he had to step down from the show. And for the grand finale, what they did was they brought back Matt James, The Bachelor. They brought back Michelle, the um, the girl, the half black girl who didn't win. And they brought back Rachel Kirkconnell, the girl who was involved in all this drama. They bring them all back, <laughs> which is crazy. Like I'm laughing because it's so crazy. Like 
I don't watch TV a lot. So y'all, if you guys watch TV a lot and this kind of madness happens on TV all the time, then let me know. But I really don't watch TV often. So for me, this was crazy. I'm like, why would you put all those dramatic situations on one episode? It was really crazy TV. So essentially they bring back Michelle and you know they say to Michelle, like, do you still love Matt James? How did you feel when he broke up with her? And this is all coming from the, the um the author his name is emmanuel ocho i think i hope i'm pronouncing his name right again his book is called conversation uncomfortable conversations with a black man so um he's you know dropping some really fantastic questions on her and you know he's like you know how did you feel and she's like you know i felt awful like i was in a really bad place when he broke up with me on national television and then all that drama was happening with like you know the aunt bellum parties and rachel mcconnell um Kirkconnell and all this kind of stuff. So then after he's like, okay, well, you know, we have Matt James in the back and we're going to bring him out so you can talk to him. And this is going to be the first time you talk to him since he broke up with you. So they're talking or whatever. And she's just like, you know, um, I would, I just wanted two minutes to say my piece because I was in a really bad place after you broke up with me and you wouldn't even give me two minutes to state my piece. Not that I wanted to get back with you, but that I just wanted to, you know, at least understand like just have some closure, so to speak, which I think is fair, right? So anyways, that happens. Um, he explains himself. He's like, you know, had I have known that that's what you wanted to say to me, I would have given you the opportunity. Um, but like, it is what it is. And, you know, I hope you can forgive me. And so she forgives him. And then she gets in her piece, which is in my view, the equivalent of telling somebody about themselves. She's kind of like, you know, in the future, I hope that you can like, and I'm summarizing this, but she was like, in the future, I hope that you can um, learn how to move beyond the, first of all, kissing with your eyes open. And secondly, develop more of a vo vocabulary outside of like, thank you for sharing that. So anyways, that happens. Then they bring out the girl who he was set up to like spend the rest of his life with, the white girl who had all the issues, uh, Rachel Kirkconnell. They bring her out. And he just like, it was, it was the most great, like I felt uncomfortable for her. And I mean, rightfully like good for her, she's being accountable for her actions, but like he broke up with her as well. Once all the drama unfolded, uh, Matt James broke up with Rachel and you know, she pretty much lost everything. Like for her, like she was really in love with him. And I, I can only imagine that's very, very, very difficult. So the Emmanuel now is asking her questions like, you know, what was going through your mind when you decided to go to a party like that? And like, given the fact that you were on this show, did you not once stop to think that perhaps you, these pictures of you would surface, you know, people from your past would come forth about you making fun of them for dating black guys. And here you are setting up to marry one. So he's kind of asking her questions like that. And, you know, she's pouring out her heart to like, um, you know, Matt James, and he's kind of like just has nothing to say to her. So it was just a crazy, crazy episode. Like I kind of gave you guys the Cliff Notes version of it, but um, essentially like cancel culture hasn't necessarily applied to her. Cause like, I mean, I don't know what she did before this. Like I can't, I can't remember what she did before, but she was just a contestant on the show. She lost her potential life mate. Chris Harrison lost his like host. Like he's been hosting the bachelor for something upwards of like 18 to 20 seasons. Like, and that might be wrong, but that's just to tell you, it's been a really long time that he's been hosting and like, he's not hosting anymore because of the whole drama and the way he handled it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what happened there. But um, you're so welcome, Third Eye, Third Eye Angel. Um, when Dazzle says, I do not watch The Bachelor, but I do watch Married at First Sight. That's the next one that I heard was really good. And because I did actually enjoy Bachelor, I may give it a chance. So we'll see. When Dazzle says, oh my God, sounds like a real get out story. It was crazy. It was honestly crazy. Like the way I explained it to you guys, is like a tenth of how interesting it was to watch. Like the fact that they replaced Chris Harrison with like a bona fide human rights advocate, my heart is exploding with pride. Like I love where our world is going. I love the fact that we're keeping people accountable. I love the fact that like, you know, as black people, when people do wrongful things, we are now keeping people accountable and making sure that these things don't repeat themselves. So that was fantastic. Um, Moments by Design, oh, that explains it. I knew Chris was no longer the host, but I didn't know why. Yeah, girl, that's the reason why. Like, it was insane. Patricia, I didn't watch it. 
<laughs> Moose by Design, wow, that's wild. Um, Cyrus says, what is cancel culture? So essentially it's like when someone makes a mistake and literally they're canceled. Like cancel culture can apply to any person of influence, any person of power, anyone really. Um, where like, you know, you get canceled because you made a mistake. So in her case, she made the mistake of attending that party and celebrating like slavery essentially. And it hit the news and people wanted to cancel her. I don't think she's gonna be canceled though because like a lot of people were kind of, you know, um, coming to her rescue, so to speak. And, you know, really advocating that we should give her a second chance which I think is, you know, admirable, but um yeah i didn't realize that this wasn't plugged in the whole time i'm so sorry for that you guys i i wonder what type of sound that was for all night long but um hopefully it's improved now so um it's 11 o'clock it's getting a little late i'm gonna do one more would you rather so um because i got work early in the morning um would you rather let's see let's find a good one um, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> okay. Would you rather be able to take back anything you say or hear every conversation around you? Would you rather be able to take back Everything, uh-oh, I think my internet is not doing too well right now. Would you rather be able to take back anything you said or hear every conversation around you? Wasn't there a movie like that? I feel like it was, um, who was in that movie? Was Taraji P. Henson in that movie? I think so. Was it Little? I think it was Little. Um, Third Eye Angel, Married at First Sight is really good. One of my faves right now. Ooh, okay, I've got to check it. I've definitely got to check it. You and someone else was telling me that that show is really, really good. Like a family member was like, you really need to check it. Cyrus, I like the wedding photo in the background. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Moments by Design says, hear every conversation around me. <laughs> Uh, R. Williams says, I want to hear the convos. Cyrus says, I want both. I want to hear the convos too. <laughs> like, I would love to, but you know what? That might be irritating after a while. Like imagine you can hear every single convo and you can't stop it. That'd be crazy. Yeah, it was like What Men Want. I think it was What Men Want. Yeah, yes, it was. It totally was. Patricia says both. <laughs> that would be nice though, to take back anything you said. So there's a feature on Instagram and you can take back like something that you said. So like, say you post something to somebody, you can totally like take it back. But the thing is, is like, sometimes they can see it and you can't tell. So um, word to the wise, if you guys have ever tried to use that feature, I would say not to. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, people can see when you posted whatever you said. And then if they saw it and then it vanishes, they're gonna know and they're gonna be like side eyeing you. So yeah, careful. Um, what Women Want, I think, was the name of that movie. When Dazzle Wants Both Too. I know, that's a hard one, right? Like, I'd love to be able to take back something I said. Because sometimes you put your foot in your mouth. Other times you say things out of anger. Like, we're all human here. Um, and I'd love to be able to take those back. But unfortunately, you can't. When Dazzle says, I still want to see that movie. That movie is really good. What Women Want, like, it's a really, really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Cyrus says that app sounds messy. Insta is messy. When you <laughs> Insta's super messy. Insta's messy. You, social media period is messy. But I think the messiest one is Twitter. Like I think out of all of them, Twitter is like a hot mess. Like I Twitter is a hot mess professionally. Twitter is a hot mess, like, you know, personally. Like Twitter's just a hot mess, period. Third eight, I angel. Take back what I said. I'm a Scorpio and my mouth can be on 10 sometimes. <laughs> Don't kill me. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. I know. I know. Honestly, I'm my sign is cancer. And like, once I get like in my spaces, like, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I really get mad. I really get mad. I will say that. I don't really get mad. But there are times when I say things and I'm like, I just wish I could take that back. Like, what was the point of saying that? Like, please, I just wish. 
But yeah, curl friends, this has been good. This has been so much fun. I am actually not going to save this broadcast um, because um, yeah, I just want, I, I realize that most of us prefer to be here live in the flesh, that type of a thing together. So I will be uploading another video on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. And then um, hopefully by that time, we'll be able to establish a more regular schedule, which will be weekend based. Just trying to figure out, is it going to be every Saturday or is it going to be every Sunday? Because I know, um, you know, the girlfriend crew and myself included like to have, you know, just know when things are going to be coming out so that, you know, you can grab the snack, grab the drink, grab the tea and just chill. So, yeah. Um, Moments by Design, oh, you know what Taraji P's movie was, What Men Want, and I think it was based off Mel Gibson's What Women Want. Oh, that's true. I haven't seen that, but I've heard of it. So thank you so much, Curl Friends. If you guys want to continue the conversation, you want to, you know, hang out further, if you want to share your own stuff that you're doing here on YouTube or wherever, including selling your goods and services, by all means, feel free to drop your links inside of our secret society on Facebook. And that's our Five Natural Hair Rocks Curl Friend Crew group. Thank you so much. I love you so much. We have been live for nearly two hours. This is one of our longer live streams. My heart is so full. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I really, truly love each and every one of you for sharing your time and your thoughts and just your energy with me tonight. So yeah, you guys have a really good night. Um, have a fantastic rest of your week. Tomorrow is hump day. Thank goodness. Middle of the week. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you guys on the weekend. Bye.